is that the matching relations have the same arities. Uh, question to you, if I show just uh, like this, do you see anything or not? Do you yes, see anything on the, no? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. you see me moving the, this pointer? Yeah. Okay, so uh, the condition is that there is a homomorphism from A to AW and both things are finite. So this W stands for weak. So how I look at it, we have uh, two versions, you know, strong and weak. So we have a strong version of the domain, this D, and a weak version of the domain, which is this DW, and strong version of relations and uh, weak version of relations. Okay, so now when, when the domain is fixed, uh, we can define this uh, PCSP over this pair of relational structures. Uh, there are two versions. Uh, one version is we are given another structure of the same type. Uh, we should answer yes if there exists a homomorphism from X to A, and we should answer no uh, when there is even no homomorphism from X to B. So know that this yes and no are disjoint just because, ah, okay, this B is not B, but AW, okay? And uh, the condition that there exists a homomorphism from A to AW just means that yes and no are disjoint. And uh, there is something in between, in which case we don't care what the result is. Uh, what I prefer to think about is the search version, which is not, not known to be equivalent, but seems to be quite tightly related. So on input, we are given a structure such that there exists, we are promised that there exists a homomorphism to, to the strong version, to A, and uh, our task is to find some homomorphism to the weaker structure. Okay, so here's some picture. Uh, typical input may look like this. So we have some variables like z, z2, z4, and so on. And uh, we have uh, some relations between them. And uh, uh, we are promised in the search version that we can evaluate the variables in the strong domains so that the strong version of each relation is satisfied. And what you want to do is to find an evaluation in the weak domains so that the weak versions of the relations are satisfied, right? So this should be clear because I'm, all the time I'm talking about PCSPs. So just shout, shout out loud if this is not clear. Right, so if this is okay, then uh, the main question for us here is, uh, what is the computational complexity depending on the template? It's sometimes uh, solvable in polynomial time. It's certainly always in NP. Uh, the conjecture might be that it's either P or NP complete. We don't know yet. Uh, one example of such a PCSP, a well-known example is uh, approximate coloring, say. So if we take the strong structure to be three element domain together with the inequality relation, so complete graph on three vertices, and the weak structure is seven element domain, and again, the inequality relation, then what we are trying to do in the search version is we are given a three colorable graph, and we want to find a seven coloring. <clears throat> or in the decision version, uh, we want to decide between graphs which are three colorable and graphs which are not even seven colorable. So two remarks here. Uh, first of all, note that uh, the normal uh, fixed template CSP over A is the same as PCSP if the strong and the weak versions are the same. And uh, second remark, uh, there is an obvious multi-sorted version which I will use. So in this version, we will have more strong domains and uh, more weak domains. The relations can go across domains. So there can be a relation which is a subset of say domain one times domain two and uh, appropriate weak versions. And the problem is the same, just a obvious generalization. And uh, just a small remark, uh, general PCSP uh, is equivalent to a version where all the relations are actually graphs of functions, the, the strong ones and the weak ones. It's just because if you look at a binary relation, is a subset of d, d times d. This is essentially the same for these purposes 
as the pair of uh, mappings like R, first projection to D, and R, second projection to D. Okay, so you can replace uh, this uh, kind of relation in your template by two graphs of mappings and nothing changes. Okay, the complexity doesn't change. <clears throat> so with such PCSPs uh, or the full version of this, where we have all graphs of function, it's usually called label cover in the literature. All right, so this is about PCSP. Uh, now, what I'm gonna talk about is this. So this is the story. <laughs> okay, and then my, what I draw doesn't erase, unfortunately, which is a bit inconvenient. Can I erase everything somehow? Clear maybe. Clear, ah, yeah, good. <clears throat> So, so this is uh, the story. Uh, this is basically the abstract of the talk, if you read it. So one nice thing about CSPs, um, we have some sufficient condition, which enables us to reduce a CSP over one structure to a CSP of another structure. Uh, so this less than or equal should mean uh, there is a polynomial time reduction. Okay. And uh, uh, this sufficient condition also gives us some NP hardness criterion. Uh, and uh, it's actually now known by the, by the famous result of, of Gulatov and Juk that this, is, uh, this criterion is good enough for uh, NP hardness for every CSP in this very strong sense. So if this CSP of A is not NP, then uh, this sufficient condition applies and we get a reduction from CSP B to CSP A. So we get a reduction from any CSP to our uh, fit CSP. Okay, now PCSP, uh, the situation is a bit different. So there are some, some nice things. For example, essentially the same sufficient condition still works. And uh, the second thing is, uh, that the reduction is in fact trivial. So I will explain this on the um, fourth slide, I guess. Of course, uh, what I mean by trivial reduction first, trivial reduction just doesn't change the input. And of course, this is uh, rubbish here because uh, well, we need to change input if we are moving between two relational structures. But if you look at this CSP in the right way, then actually the reduction is trivial in this very sense, not changing the input. The bad news is that uh, this criterion is not good enough for NP hardness. So there are NP hard PCSPs so that uh, the criterion doesn't apply. So we need something better and there are uh, some better conditions. Uh, one of them, uh, a very general one, is uh, due to uh, Brands, Vorochna and Jivni, the last version. Uh, the bad news is that uh, it's not of the same shape as in the CSP. So it doesn't, uh, doesn't follow from a general reduction from some sufficient condition for reduction between two PCSPs, like in the CSP case. And also it uses complicated results. So in this work, uh, what we do, uh, we give a better sufficient condition for existence of a reduction. Uh, similarly to the CSP, the uh, reduction is actually not trivial, but is, it is very simple, obvious, what, what I call obvious reduction. And uh, well, it implies the NP hardness criterion of Brands, Rochna, and Jimmy, uh, with the difference that uh, it doesn't use any complicated result, and uh, the proof is quite simple. And I hope to be able to show you a substantial part of it. Okay, so, so this is about the, uh, the sufficient, the old sufficient condition for existence of reduction. So this is a theorem uh, which says that uh, one PCSP reduces to another PCSP whenever there exists a minion homomorphism from the polymorphism minion of this CSP to the polymorphism minion of this CSP. PCSP. Okay, so here I want to explain these terms. So uh, by uh, a polymorphism of variety X, where X is some finite set, I just mean a homomorphism from uh, the X power of A to, 
to the weak version of A. So a mapping that sends uh, tuples uh, in the relation A to uh, the weak versions of A. Okay, and the minion of all polymorphisms, which is denoted by M, it's simply the set of all polymorphisms from A to AW. Uh, so I call it minion. Uh, what is a minion? It's simply a set of operations from some domain to some other domain, which is closed undertaking minors. Uh, by a minor, I mean uh, just merging, shuffling uh, variables and introducing dummy ones. So I hope this example will make, make it clear what I mean by minor. So let's consider some seven array function f and a mapping from a seven element set to three element set given by this rule. So one is mapped to one, two is mapped to one, three is mapped to three and so on. Now the minor of f determined by pi is this ternary function phi pi, which is defined like this. So if you want to know the value on some triple d1, d2, d3, you just apply f to the tuple d1, d1, d3, d2, d3, d1, d3. Okay, and what uh, these, these elements are dictated by the mapping pi. Okay. <clears throat> So uh, this, uh, we, in the complexity for, for this existence of many homomorphism, uh, we actually don't care about uh, the concrete polymorphisms. We just care about what they do, uh, how, how the minor function is uh, performing. So, so the structure we actually need here is, is, is this one on the right. So for every x, we have some set mx of x array polymorphisms. Okay? And for each mapping from x to y, we have a mapping from mx to my, from x array polymorphisms to y array polymorphisms, given simply by, uh, by this minor operation. Okay. So I, I don't want to say it loud because uh, people often turn off their attention if, if some categories are mentioned. So this is, this is just a fun term. Okay. So, uh, so this is a minion. Now this minion homomorphism, this is natural transformation, but don't say it too long. So minion homomorphism is a mapping uh, which sends function in one minion to functions in the other minion and preserves the arities. So in fact, for every X, we have a function sending X array polymorphisms to X array polymorphisms, and it should preserve minors in the obvious sense. So if you take a function and it's minor, now shift the whole picture by, by this psi, this minion homomorphism, uh, this still works, okay? The results will be still minors. So now uh, I hope this theorem, everything is explained there. If we have a minion homomorphism from here to here, then uh, we get a reduction, okay? So now uh, from here, it also follows uh, that we have some criterion for hardness, MP hardness. <coughs> So let's denote by I uh, a trivial minion, by which I mean a minion which is somehow contained in every other minion. Uh, I can describe it as a minion whose all members come from a single non-constant function from A to AW, which we are guaranteed to have. And uh, again, silently, this is identified. Okay. And, uh, now, uh, an observation of this theorem is that if we have a homomorphism from a minion of, of this template A to the uh, trivial minion, then actually this PCSP is NP hard. In this very strong sense, uh, this theorem gives us a reduction from any PCSP to this given PCSP. Okay? It's just because, because this I is, uh, has a homomorphism to, to any N. And now it's also helpful to somehow, uh, so I know this is so far abstract, but now it will hopefully start making sense for everyone. Uh, this condition of existence of a homomorphism from M to the trivial minion uh, can be phrased as follows. So for, uh, we need to have this mu, uh, which is a mapping sending an X-ray polymorphism to one of its coordinates. So think of you want to select for any polymorphism one important one important coordinate, okay? And it needs, it needs to behave nicely with minors, okay? So here is some uh, abstract 
thing what it precisely means, but let's just look at this example, right? this example of a minor. And uh, this condition simply means that if we select the fifth coordinate of F as the important one, then we need to select the third coordinate of, of F pi as the important one, okay? So, so somehow it behaves in this obvious way nicely with minors. For every function, we need an important coordinate and the important coordinate behaves nicely with minors, okay? So this is some kind of uh, NP hardness uh, criterion and this is the one which is not sufficient. Okay, the old one, but uh, this is the one which is sufficient for every CSP action. So if there are no questions, let me move to the other slide. Okay, so now I want to explain why, uh, uh, why this reduction is actually in fact trivial. Okay? So here is some one uh, observation, which is essentially already contained in some uh, papers, but uh, which was not phrased this way. So let me phrase it this way. Any PCSP is actually equivalent to PCSP where the strong, uh, strong relations are actually all relations. Okay? So every relation is in, uh, in the template. And then there are some, some relaxations. Okay, so let me try to say it again. So usually PCSP, uh, what we have is for some relations, we have uh, their relaxations. In here, we actually have all relations and their relaxations. Okay, so this is also interesting for CSPs. <clears throat> and it tells us that actually CSP is, is generally PCSP. It's a more natural problem with PCSP. Well, okay, so how do you do it? How do you construct this relaxation of every relation? And actually it was constructed in the previous slide. So if you want to relax a graph of a function, okay, so such a binary relation between D and E, well, the relaxation is simply the mapping in the previous slide. Okay, so the relaxed domain is the set of DRA polymorphisms. Uh, and the relax function is the you know, taking minor function. Okay, so now for every graph of a function, we have its relaxation. And we also can relax other relations if, if we wish to do so uh, by the same principle, talking about the details. Okay, and uh, what is essentially proved in this paper of uh, uh, Bulin, Krokhin, Opershal is that these two species piece are equivalent. Here maybe as just small remark, Actually, this structure contains infinitely many relations. So we always need to consider just finite fragments, which, which we need. Okay, so just technical, technical remark. But now, if you work instead uh, with a PCSP with this uh, better version, let's let me call it, then uh, the reduction in the previous slide is actually uh, trivial. So here is it, here it is written. If we have a minion homomorphism from uh, polymorphisms here to polymorphisms here, we get a reduction from uh, this PCSP to this better version of the other PCSP. And now the reduction is trivial. We just don't change the input, okay? So now you can ask, uh, so maybe let me look at it this this right-hand side PCSP is an enemy, okay? And we are, uh, we are fighting for this B guy and we want to solve some PCSP problem. So we are given an instance and now we want to ask an enemy uh, some question and do, you know, uh, do something with it. So create a solution in, uh, in this weaker structure. So what we do here, we just ask the same question. <laughs> here is my instance I want to solve. Uh, please solve uh, the same instance. Okay. And also you see, uh, if you look at it this way, that we are like too nice to the enemy, right? We can ask a uh, more complicated question, which can help me, uh, help us better to, to solve this original PCSP. Okay, and this is the basic idea by, uh, of, of the obvious reduction. Okay, it's still, it's still good.
Mm. Okay, so now uh, here, here, here are some uh, NP harness criteria for PCSP. Um, here I repeat the criterion we already derived. Okay, if we have a function or family of functions so that uh, we assign an important coordinate to every polymorphism so that it behaves nicely with minors, then uh, our PCSP is anti-complete. So here is again the minor and I will illustrate it here at the bottom. Uh, I will illustrate all the conditions on this example. So if we select a uh, second coordinate to be important for F, we need to have first coordinate because D1 here important for the minor. Right now, a slightly uh, better criterion uh, is this. So we don't need to select one important coordinate, but say at most seven important coordinates. Uh, okay. By the way, that uh, that uh, simplest criterion is already good for, for example, for proving that four coloring a three colorable graph is empty hard. So now the better criterion. We need to select uh, at most seven important coordinates. But now what we require is uh, not that it behaves really nicely with uh, minors, but somehow weakly nicely with minors. Okay. So if we take a function, uh, we take the important coordinates and apply the, the identification of variables, we get some subset here. If we take the minor first and apply, uh, take the important coordinates, we, net, we get another function. And the condition is these two sets have to do something with each other. They need to intersect non-empty, okay? So let's look at the bottom example again. So if we select, say, this two element subset of coordinates as important, so the third and fourth one, uh, we don't require the second and third coordinates to be important for the minor. We just need that two or three appears there, okay? So the important coordinates can be, say, the first and second, that's fine because there is this common two, okay? So this criterion is already good enough for uh, all MP hard PCSPs over symmetric Boolean domains. This is proved in here, here is some special case of it. And it's also, uh, it's also enough uh, in the case that uh, the left-hand side structure is a cycle of odd length and the right-hand side structure is K3. Okay, so of course there is the question like how to select the, the important coordinates and there are like many ways uh, which are used combinatorial, analytical, and in this case topological. And there is no like, you know, um, so far they don't have anything in common. So it would be great to have some general explanation, but we don't have it yet. And uh, so the last criterion is uh, even better, stronger. Some version of it appeared in this paper already, so but but uh, these authors finally managed to formulate it uh, in the best way so far. So uh, the situation, the structure is the same. We need to select, say, at most seven important coordinates for every polymorphism, but we need, uh, we require something even weaker than uh, than before. So we only require that for any chain of minors. Okay, and this diagram is commutative. So uh, the minor, the function from x1 to x3 is actually composition of the function from x1, x2 to x2, x3. That some of the squares are weakly commutative. Okay, so some of the minors which we saw in this picture work uh, at least a bit nicely. Okay, so it's a natural generalization uh, of the previous condition. Yeah, it is useful. Uh, for example, mm, there is a result by Dino Regev and Smith that uh, coloring uh, three uniform hypergraph, uh, which is two colorable by, by any number of a fixed number of colors is NP hard. And it's this criterion is almost enough in their proof. So I'm a bit cheating here. Uh, the cheating is uh, that they actually don't have this seven to be fixed number, but something which grows uh, uh, slower, slowly with X, okay? So namely it was some logarithm of X. I was told by Andre that Michal Vrochna can prove that actually we can do it with this criterion only without, without cheating. So 
but I'm not quite sure about it. I don't know if Michal Brochnais is here, whether he can confirm. Yeah, I think I think uh, I think it's probable. Yeah. I didn't write the book down, but I think it's probable for what comes to. Yeah, me. great. Okay, so so this criterion is uh, is actually enough, and it, it's also enough for certain symmetric non boolean PCSPs. So that's how uh, the, the paper where the condition was actually formulated. Uh, all right. So so here, what I didn't like is that you know this criterion comes from a general result where we don't have identity here, but we have a general general minimum on the right hand side. Whereas for the other criteria, we didn't have anything like that, okay? And this is what uh, our theorem says, actually, that uh, it works okay, in general. So, mm, so this is the main result. Uh, yeah, by the way, that, uh, that homomorphism from the last slide, I would call seven five homomorphism. So seven would be, uh, you know, the number of important coordinates I'm allowed to select and five would be the length of the chain. Okay, this is not uh, a notation I would suggest just for this talk. So where, uh, when there is this weaker homomorphism between the PCSPs or the polymorphism minions, then we have a reduction, but uh, now by an obvious reduction. Okay, so this is something which, which we didn't have. So we didn't, didn't have the criterion, but also we didn't have that the, uh, the reduction is obvious. So the notion of 7-5 homomorphism, I am not gonna explain, it's just here, it's the same as the last slide. Let me just explain what I mean by obvious reduction. Uh, well, I mean the reduction which will come up to my mind just as the first better than trivial. So, so here's the reduction. We have some original instance, something like this, okay? Some variables, Zs, and some relations between them. And now uh, we have this advantage that we can ask whatever, right? So why uh, in the trivial reduction, we ask the same question. We, we, here we are more demanding. So we have uh, this first layer where we just have the original variables and uh, we can put the constraint there if we wish so. Okay? But then we also have second layer where we ask for values of pairs of variables. Okay, so this Z12 should be a uh, va uh, value for Z1, Z2 together. Okay, so the domain of Z12 is like domain of Z1 times domain of Z2, but also what I can repair uh, already in the domain that, uh, that I only allow the admissible values. Okay, so the dom domain of this variable will not be the whole D square, but only R in this picture. Okay. So I, I ask about values for all pairs of variables, and then I also ask for values of all triples of variables and so on up to some constant, which may be huge, but constant. And then I include the obvious constraints. So for example, if I know a value for variable z1, z2, z3, which is coded in here, I of course know the value for variable z1, Z1, two, Z1 and Z2, right? So there is this projection mapping from this variable to this variable. Okay, so this is my reduction. Uh, well, I, I find it obvious, I don't know how, how, but that's what I would, just the first more demanding uh, version other than trivial. <clears throat> uh, in uh, in uh, our proof, actually, we only require for this version, we only require five layers, of carefully chosen layers, and only these projection mappings, not say, for example, the original, uh, original uh, constraints. All right, so this is the main theorem. Uh, now, let's go, let's move on. Now, uh, well, I will, I will talk about only the intermediate condition where, uh, you know, the, the, the middle one. So we are, to, to every uh, polymorphism, we are given a seven element set of variables. So it behaves somewhat nicely with minors. And we'll not talk about the, uh, the brands rochna uh, Givni condition, which is the most complicated. So 
here is a proof why uh, indeed this, this middle condition, uh, you know, the BBKO in the slide gives us NPRMs, okay? So, <clears throat> Uh, first of all, what is label cover? Uh, by, by this, I just mean CSP over graphs of functions, which I alluded to in the first slide already. Now, this problem, gap label cover one over 49. What is this? So input, we are given a satisfiable label cover instance. Okay, so there's a picture of label cover instance here on the right. There's some variables and projection constraints. Uh, so input is such a satisfiable instance. And uh, our task is to find an assignment that satisfies at least one over 49th fraction of the constraints. Okay. So this is an NPR problem, but the reason is quite complicated because it's based on two deep theorems. One is the PCP theorem uh, where which proves basically that there is some constant uh, less than one, so that this is NP hard. And then uh, the parallel repetition theorem, I think this version would be enough, uh, which tells us that we can push the constant uh, arbitrarily low. Okay, so like one thing which is not so nice here is that this is actually not a PCSP, so we are outside the theory, this is a PVCSP, promise value CSP. Uh, there is a, uh, another version which I call here gap label cover seven, uh, what it is. So again, we are given a satisfiable label cover instance, but this time we are not looking for an assignment, but a seven assignment, and we want to weakly satisfy all the constraints. So seven assignment is again, uh, we are assigning two variables, the seven tuples or less of domain elements. Okay, so subset of domain elements of size at node seven. And we don't want to exactly satisfy the constraint, but weakly. Meaning, so here we have some subset. If I uh, move it by the constraint, I get some subset. And this needs to intersect the subset for, for this part. Okay, there must be some intersection. Okay, now uh, this is the proof of NP hardness. Now, uh, this NP hardness criterion. Uh, the sequence of two reductions. One is a reduction from uh, gap label cover one over 49 to gap label cover seven, and a reduction from gap label, gap label cover seven to this PCSP of M. Uh, what are the reductions? Well, both are trivial, okay? Now, uh, to see that this reduction works, it's simply, uh, so this first one, it's simply a probabilistic argument if we select randomly, uniformly from each subset uh, some element, then uh, this gives us the soundness that no instances are mapped to no instances and the completeness is obvious. And here, uh, again, the soundness, uh, it just uh, like trivially follows from the condition we have on, on this meaning, okay? So we have these mappings assigning to every polymorphism some seven tuples of, uh, variables and this mapping we use to, to actually uh, find the seven assignment, okay? So if you look at it this way, then, uh, well, uh, there is obvious question, you know, this, this thing, this complicated result or NP hardness of it is actually not needed, right? What we need here is only NP completeness of this problem, okay? So I was wondering, I mean, this can have easy proof, and uh, well, and this is indeed the case, and uh, this is what I call the baby PC, PCP theorem. So here it is. Okay, good. So uh, the, PC, uh, the baby PCP theorem states that for any CSP, uh, this can be even PCSP, doesn't matter really, for any CSP, uh, the obvious reduction uh, is a, a correct reduction to gap label cover seven. Okay. So in particular, if I choose some NP-complete CSP, this gives, uh, gives me NP-completeness of this problem. Uh, but also this, there is this added information that the reduction is really the obvious one, okay? And I want to show you uh, a, a proof of this more or less. Uh, because it's quite simple. 
So let me try. So let's say for simplicity, the domain is uh, whatever, it's not important here, but let's say it's three element and the template uh, consists of all binary relations, for example, okay? So now we have some instance of this CSP that looks like this. And uh, we create uh, a new instance like this. It's the same principle as before, uh, but we just use two layers, A and B, for some carefully chosen A and B, okay? Well, not carefully chosen, they just need to be large enough. Well, A needs to be large enough and B needs to be large enough compared to A. So now we have a variable for each A to both uh, the original variables like this, and a variable for each uh, B to both of original variables and the obvious projection constraints, okay? And I claim uh, this is a correct reduction, a reduction, okay? So what, what we need here to prove that the reduction is correct is, uh, is this fact. So if we, are, if we are given some seven assignment for this new instance, we can somehow use it to find a solution to the original instance, okay? So this is the decoding step we need to do here. So now uh, the seven assignment for this new instance gives us a very clean combinatorial structure, which I'm, I was trying to describe in here. So what is the structure? For any set of variables of size A, so these are these will be then denoted capital U, smaller sets of variables. So for each set of variables of size A, we have some set of uh, evaluations, so like opinions on uh, values of these variables. We only have at most seven of them. Okay, so at most it should be less than. And uh, we assume that they are, they are formed by partial solutions, okay? So uh, let me just say it again. For any set of variables of the original instance of size A, we are given seven possible evaluations, okay? And now we have the same for uh, sets of variables of size v, uh, B, okay? They will be denoted by, by V. So again, we have uh, seven element sets of partial solutions. Uh, now, the, the fact that this new instance is weakly satisfies, satisfied gives us some weak consistency, which is this condition written formally, but let's look at the picture. So for this A element set of variables U, we are given some seven or at most seven assignments, okay? So one assignment is that Z1 is mapped to one, Z2 is mapped to two and so on. Second assignment is this one and so on. So each row is one assignment. Now we have some, uh, some set of variables of size B that contains you. And we have this uh, seven evaluation for this set as well. And then they need to, to be weakly consistent, meaning at least one option in here is consistent with a one option in here. Okay, so we have, we have one, two, two, one, one, three, one, two, and uh, we have the same in here. Okay. <clears throat> so this is very like simple and clean combinatorial structure, which we get by uh, seven assignment for the new instance. Now what we want to derive is a solution to the old instance, but we actually don't work, want to work with the old instance at all. So what we actually find is a mapping from variables to the domain, such that for each pair of variables, <coughs> there exists this V containing these two variables, so that uh, this mapping is among the seven options for this set. Okay, and uh, you don't need to pay too much attention to this, but just because uh, these SVs are already formed by partial solutions. We are guaranteed that this F is actually a solution to the old instance just because the relations are just binary. Okay, so uh, this will not play much role, but uh, I just want to say we, we just can ignore the instance altogether and just work with this called combinatorial setting. Okay, so now I want to, to show you uh, a proof and 
now it's gonna be technical, but just maybe so that you see it's really no uh, no no complicated at all. So here is almost the full proof. Okay? So here is our combinatorial set situation for each set of size A. We have some seven guesses, but now let's consider the general case that we have Q possible evaluations, okay? not seven, but Q. Now for every big set of size B, we have uh, some R options for the evaluations. We know that uh, this object is weakly consistent and what we want to get is a solution, okay? Uh, in fact, what we prove is that for each Q and R, each sufficiently big, big A and each sufficiently big B, uh, this claim will be true. Now the strategy is kind of induction. Uh, there are a bit different arguments for two cases. One case is that we already know the claim where the smaller sets are allowed to have Q minus one guesses, Q minus one evaluations and the bigger sets are allowed to have R and we go uh, one step further with the Q. Okay, and this, this is what I'm actually showing and there are actually two subcases and I'm showing one of them. Okay, the other one is uh, even easier. So nothing lost. Okay, so this is the proof for the situation. So we assume we have it for Q minus one and we try to prove it for QR. So say some A prime, B prime, work for this uh, situation where we know the claim is correct. Okay, so if we have here uh, guesses for sets of size A prime and B prime, here we have Q minus one and R, we know that this guarantees a solution. Now we choose somehow sufficiently big A, B and then some auxiliary C. Uh, I'm not specifying uh, what is sufficiently big, but we just work with sufficiently big. Now here is the assumption we make. Okay, so this is the assumption uh, coming from the fact that we are considering only one case out of two. Okay, so what we have, uh, this is drawn on this picture. Here is the formal, uh, formal formula. So let's say that we know that there exists this set of size X, which we fix uh, set X of variables of size A prime. Okay, A prime is uh, the size uh, we know for the induction hypothesis, the size of the small ones. So that the following holds. So for each tuple D, of, for each evaluation D, for each set of variables Y containing X of size C, there exists a V of size B, okay? So V depending on Y, so that uh, among the you know, R options we have, there is no one which is consistent with this D. Okay, so I, I know that this, this is complicated, uh, just two quantifiers, but for each X, for each Y, there exists some, some big, big set so that no guesses are consistent with this D. Okay, so it's just some assumption. Be hard to remember, but but uh, well, I guess I, I am not trying to <clears throat> to explain all the details. But I mean the details are here. Really the rest is uh, to be checked. So uh, this is our assumption. Now we fix this special set X. Okay. Uh, what we do next? So here we worked with the with the SVs. Okay, with this part. Now we will work with the other part for the. For the uh, with the opinions for the smaller sets. What we want is to find D, okay, X is already, this is this picture I'm actually showing you. This is the fixed X. We want to find D so that for any W of size A prime, there exists some U, U in here, so that if we look at the uh, small Q opinions, the seven opinions for the for this small set, there is some D in here, okay? Some tuple so that for any W, you can find something bigger so that it's somewhat consistent. Now, uh, this is possible to do uh, whenever, uh, whenever A is big enough compared to A prime. 
it is approved. Just let me go quickly. I, I guess I'm losing everyone now, but whatever. So it is our X, and let's say some W uh, doesn't work for some specific D, and then some other W doesn't work for some other D, and so on. And if you don't find the good D, then uh, the union of all these things uh, actually gives us a contradiction. Okay, so we need this union to be small, a smaller size than A. This is uh, very simple if you think about it for five minutes, but I don't have five minutes. Uh, now we are ready to actually define this kind of situation, but for the prime sizes where we know already the solution is going. Okay, how we do it? So for the small ones, for the sets of size A prime, we just uh, take the corresponding uh, U, like in this picture, we take away all the tuples which have D here okay, and just uh, restrict the result to this W. Okay, so this is, we take away, take away the Ds and uh, see, and, and these are, uh, these, these tuples are our set SW, the set, new set SW. Okay, so what we achieve here that we, uh, because of this condition here, uh, the number of elements of S prime is less than Q. So we can use the induction hypothesis. Okay, and for the big sets, uh, here is a construction. So M is the set we want to, uh, of size B prime. We want to define S, uh, S prime M. So what we do for each W, w of the small size, we consider the corresponding Q, which we liked before. Now take union of all these, and use this y, this union, as the y in the assumption, okay? And uh, this, uh, this assumption guarantees us that some v with nice property exists, the nice property being there is no d in here, and this is what you use, okay? Now, if you just, uh, which was impossible, I'm sure, but if you follow the instruction or return to it, you will see that <clears throat> we did it so that uh, this thing is really weakly consistent, just because we took away two plus which have D and here we have no D, that's simply the reason, okay? And, uh, and that's it. So this is, I mean, this is the most complicated part of proof and it's already very simple, okay? Just like dealing with sets, the only complication is these you know, two changes of quantifiers. <clears throat> well, so a, a comment here, uh, this seems like genuinely different from, from Dino's proof of PCP theorem. I don't know the uh, other proof of PCP theorem, unfortunately yet, uh, but you know, Dino's proof, the, uh, it, it's not just simplification of the proof because in her proof, uh, all like the ways how, how things were selected were always just very simple counting. You know? This free analysis, you count how many times function agrees with another, another function. This was for, for the uh, alphabet reduction step, or you just take simply majority vote for another step. And this doesn't seem to be like this at all. Okay? So it doesn't seem to be like counting, uh, counting argument at all, just because of you know, these quantifiers. They, somehow this construction doesn't seem to, to to be phrasable in 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 analytical way, counting way. So well, yeah. So this this seems to be different, and also it's simple. All right. So um, let me show you um, like one. Okay, now it's disappeared here. Yeah, one uh, like stupid application. So uh, what is it good for? Uh, well, for good feeling so far uh, mostly, but uh, so there is one nice application of the old theorem, the basic theorem that uh, existence of homomorphisms give us a reduction. So uh, this is also kind of useless theorem, but at least, at least one instance that it helped morally which is a reduction from this hypergraph coloring result to a uh, coloring result. So this is five coloring of three color of a graph. And this reduction, uh, this, uh, yeah, and there is a, uh, it's quite simple to show there is a homomorphism. So we get reduction for free. 
Then, uh, just by composing, we also get that the criteria, criterion of Brands, Vrochna, and Jimmy is satisfied, especially uh, uh, after this result of, of Vrochna. But you know the, the way how it's found, it was found was really by using you know, uh, this general theorem, not just the NPR mass criterion. So this is one nice application of the previous like you know, abstract nonsense. Uh, there is one uh, kind of application of this new abstract nonsense that seven five homomorphisms give you reductions. So uh, here is a simple fact which was not known. Is, uh, we think so if you take PCSP over some minimum. And you add, say, all seven other functions, we don't get easier. Okay? So if you add uh, polymorphisms, then in general you may get easier. You never get harder. But here we actually don't get easier. It's just because there is an obvious you know, seven homomorphism from this minimum to this minimum. And uh, somehow the moral is to remember that uh, that the complexity indeed. Uh, doesn't depend on low already polymorphisms. Okay? You can just ignore them all together. Or uh, moreover, you know, if you add to a minimum something which is NP complete by the uh, BWG criterion, then uh, the complexity doesn't change. This is a bit funny because actually this reduction here comes from the fact that some six array uh, polymorphism is absent here. So, but this tells us if you add it, uh, it doesn't get harder anyway. So one way how to look at it, you know, you can, you can remove some junk from your minimum because uh, without making it easier. That's the other way how to look at it. So this is a possible future application, but I don't have any concrete you know, complexity result I can show you. I didn't look for it. So this is more or less it. So I have one uh, more slide so, with some- So Libor, yep. question? Yep. Listen. Yeah, so how is this? Uh, so the last thing you said cannot be true for CSPs, right? So so something here is PCSP specific. Uh, what cannot be true for CSPs? Oh, I see. So you just, if you just add, okay, never mind. Yeah, so I guess I, I was just thinking we have a CSP. Obviously, we have a low arity polymorphism that will make it easy. But the, the thing is, you will make it a mini and you won't close it under. You, uh, right, yeah. You yeah, won't make it a clone. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to add something to a clone and make it still a clone, then you have a way harder job somehow than for minions. So it would be hard to you know, find application of this theorem in CSP. Well, now it's pointless because we know that even the simplest criterion is good enough, right? But, but yeah, there is nothing specific for PCSP in here. It's just for, for, for CSP as well, but, but the claims are kind of follow from known facts. Thanks. So let me just make a quick summary of what I was trying to tell you and some questions. So summary, so one information I wanted to deliver is this uh, basically just viewpoint on known results that every PCSP is actually equivalent to full PCSP where you can ask whatever questions you can you can create whatever instance you wish and don't care about the language. Okay? Uh, the second information is that there is this weaker notion of homomorphisms, which is still good enough to give us uh, reductions and more or less, uh, moreover, the reductions are obvious, not trivial, but obvious. And uh, the third one is this baby PCP theorem that uh, the obvious reduction uh, from any CSP proves NP hardness for, for this uh, version of uh, gap label cover. I was told by, by Venkat that uh, a, a very related problem is called min wrap label cover, but it's yeah, it's not exactly it, so that's why I just call it temporarily like this. <clears throat> okay, now, now uh, like a few questions here. So one question I already a bit talked about. Uh, it's known that the criterion the second, even the third criterion, the best one, uh, remains true if uh, we have slightly super constant uh, thing here. So we don't have, we don't need to have seven here. It's enough, for example, to have logarithm squared, okay, or logarithm to some power of. Well, we, we need to be smaller to, than some fixed polynomial. Uh, we don't have yet. Uh, such version, you know, of, of this discrete of this baby PCP, 
And uh, yeah, here I just recall originally, you know, this uh, super constant version was required for hardness of hypergraph coloring, not anymore because of uh, Michal Rochner. But yeah, it, it might be useful. Uh, the question is whether such version is actually true. It's not, uh, it's not obvious because I want to use only obvious reductions, for example. Okay. So, uh, or uh, whether whether you can still find you know some simple proof than than using all this machinery of PCP, and uh, in particular, uh, does uh, the obvious analog of the parallel repetition theorem work in this setting, in this you know uh, baby baby PCP setting? It's not clear. Now the second question: Is there an analog of baby uh, analog of D two one conjecture? Right, so there is a theorem that if D21 conjecture is true, uh, then uh, say uh, K coloring of alcoholable graphs is always NPR. Uh, this actually, this, this result is, is written here, it's by Venka Guru Swami and Sais and Reap. Uh, funnily, the reduction here is also trivial if you look at this PCSP, as, uh, as I told you. Uh, anyway, uh, we don't have baby version of this. This would amount to proof. Uh, well, for, for that, it would be, for example, sufficient to prove our combinatorial claim when these parameters A and B are close to each other. Okay, so say B is equal to A minus one. And this seems like you know doable problem if it's true. So it would be an obvious target. We didn't try it, but um, it'd be nice to have. Unfortunately, this will not give us uh, hardness of this PCSP. Okay, they, they use really the, the full D21. But anyway, the reduction is still trivial, so it would be nice to understand. So, and the third, uh, third sort of questions is that uh, there are more NP completeness or hardness results, which somehow do, uh, not, do not follow from this general criterion I presented. So one of them is Huang's result that, uh, which is this one, Okay, I'm not gonna read it, it's about coloring of graphs with some parameters. Well, yeah, I have no idea what's going on. It would be too nice to have, uh, you know, some generic, some, some theoretical explanation, some kind of homomorphism, which would be good enough to prove this hardness. Uh, well, yeah, another thing is uh, this uh, D21 hardness. I, I talked about another general criteria and say to get D21 hardness of PCSP would be nice to have. And uh, this last one is maybe uh, maybe most torturing me. <clears throat> it's a reduction which was used by Rochne and Jimny to prove, for example, uh, so to improve this result of Huang to, to this result, and a lot doesn't need to be a lot anymore. Okay? And like one piece or uh, the crucial piece, is a reduction from PCSP over K6 and K38 over 19 to PCSP K4, K38, okay? I don't think, uh, I didn't prove it formally, but I, I don't think it's captured by this, uh, by, by, by their criterion, but the obvious reduction still works, okay? So we would need some better homomorphism to, to capture even, uh, some better capture when obvious reduction works and obvious without any change, okay? This is the same obvious reduction. Although they phrase it uh, completely differently, of course. Uh, Mon from Monday, I actually have some notion of homomorphism, which is ugly, but, uh, but you know, I don't have any unification from, from what we have. So this is certainly a way uh, where I need to go to somehow to have a uniform uh, way how to prove hardness of PCSPs. And then prove as Dima or uh, Andre that the rest is easy. All right, so I think that's it. Thanks for listening. Okay, thanks, Libor. So let's uh, uh, let's applaud. Uh, now, uh, questions for Libor, please. Um, So question. Uh, uh, so Libor, I, I assume you also get that uh, layered version, which uh, by the same reduction, just because you had many layers. And yes, yes. Uh, well, the argument is actually again the same kind of. You know, yeah, it's simple, it's simple like, like before. Yes.
Yeah, also the, the layered one. Yeah, you told me you still consider it kind of a hack. Uh, well, now, now it doesn't seem to me uh, like a hack anymore, right? So you may decide to somehow you work with only two layers, and you may be smarter and work with more of them. I mean, it's not end of the story, obviously, as the last uh, reduction I mentioned shows us, but but it's no no longer a hack so for me. Any more questions, please? Um, question. Uh, I was wondering for this question about uh, super constant instead of seven. Mm -hmm. uh, do I understand correctly that it boils down to this dependency of your constants A, D on Q, R? Mm, yes. Yes. And, and do you have some estimates about what you get in your proof? Uh, well, no, we, we didn't try to optimize it even. Now the proof is kind of asymmetric. It's simple, but it's kind of asymmetric, and we didn't make any effort to optimize it. But it may be hard uh, with our approach, uh, but it's certainly uh, worse. So we, we would need to know somehow logarithmic better. To, to make okay, it. thanks. So Lipur, can you say how your A depends on the seven? Uh, suppose you want gap label cover seven, how big a domain do you need? Well, uh, yeah, I, I cannot tell you. No. It's, it's, it's huge actually in our proof as, as, you know, as I presented. It's not kind of Ramsey number huge, but it's you know, exponentially huge. Yeah, by the way, can I have a question? So uh, uh, I called you Michal. Marcin, <laughs> Marcin Bruchna would be so kind and somehow explain me in uh, sometimes like how, how you prove this uh, constant for hypergraph coloring. You would be able to meet some. Uh, sure, sure, okay. I'll, I'll try to write it down soon. Uh, but it's uh, in the end, it's a simple modification of, of the existing proof. There's just mm. one trick about uh, those Gnezo graphs, and that's all. Love to hear it too. Okay. Any more questions, please? So, uh, okay, then I can ask a question, perhaps. So, uh, Libor, when, um, when this baby grows up, what do you want it to be? <laughs> well, yeah. Um... Of course, I want to be at, uh, not baby, right? So this was my kind of original motivation, prove baby PCP and then uh, just make probabilistic version and that's PCP and then move on to you know, D21 and Unigames. So this is somehow the, the motivation behind it at the very beginning. Okay. Right, so... Uh... Last chance is the ask. paper ready, Ilbor? Is is the paper available for distribution? Uh, it's almost ready in preparation, so we haven't started this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. One last chance to ask a question. A technical one. Uh, okay. I sure. Post the video anywhere. Sorry, the video. Are you going to post this presentation anywhere? It's uh, being recorded, as I, as I can see. Uh, yeah, uh, we will probably post it on the on the website of the seminar if, uh, if people are interested. So we are recording because uh, if, if I manage to somehow get it to my computer. So. Yeah, uh, I will still have to look into technical details, but we are recording because uh, I've got uh, a few requests from people who could not attend today. I think even just posting the slides would be great, uh, Jakob. I, I, will, I will do it. I will post them into my website at least. Uh, Thanks. All right, so, um, well, if there are no questions, then, um, yeah, let's uh, thank Libor again. Thank you, Libor, and uh, Everyone, please send us your um, suggestions for the uh, future talks.